Good morning, it's 7.30 here in Glendale, Arizona. I'm Brother Ron, and this is Harvest Church Morning Devotions. This is Thankful Thursday. Uh, I'm glad that you're joining me this morning. I hope you're having a blessed week. Uh, what a great week of morning devotions we've had with Pastor Maria, and then a surprise on Tuesday. Tune in Tuesday. That's why it's important you tune in on Tuesday uh, with Pastor Ron. And then, of course, uh, Pastor Nate yesterday as he uh, did worship Wednesday and sang the song, uh, Be Exalted. Um, it's been quite the week. I know that the other uh, devoters have spoken about Sunday service, uh, but it was just such a special service with doors open Sunday and seeing uh, that building full to capacity. Uh, it was amazing, but what was most amazing was the response at the altar call. Watching those people come down from the stadium seating to get to the front to respond to the call uh, for a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner comes to know Christ. Imagine that they had a huge celebration on Sunday. But that's just the beginning. We're excited about what God is doing. We're, we're expecting God to move. That's why uh, Pastor Ron had the vision of building again uh, so that we would have enough space to bring in those that are hurting, those that are lost, those that uh, need a hospital, a spiritual hospital. So I want to encourage you to continue to pray for us here. If, if you're local, I invite you to join us this coming Sunday for our service, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, that first Sunday was just a uh, one time 10 a.m. Um, we're back to our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. service. So, But today is Thankful Thursday, and I'm thankful for you. And uh, we're going to continue our reading in the book of Colossians. We're going to start uh, chapter 3. We're going to cover about maybe four verses. But I have a question for you before we get started. What are you pursuing? What motivates you? Um, what is your drive? Is it to have a better paying job? Is it to have a better position in the company? Uh, is it to finally be able to buy a home or maybe go on vacation. I, I think all of us have our eyes uh, set on something that's driving us to discipline, to work, to plan, to so that we can achieve that thing uh, that's natural or we should have that. Uh, but in our passage this morning, we're going to look at what Paul is telling the believer. Remember, the last two Thursdays, we talked about being set free. We talked about being made alive because of what Christ did in our life. And so now Paul is going to re redirect the believers on what their pursuit should be, what their focus should be, what their drive, what their motivation should be. And uh, so let's read it, and then I'll add some more commentary to it. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And it says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. I'm going to pause right there. So now that we have now been spiritually awakened, we have been set free from the bondage of sin. Paul is saying our, our thought life should be spiritual. Our, we should have spiritual thinking or thinking of things on the things that are spiritual and not uh, natural. See, because everything that I described in my question was things of the natural life, things of the earth, things of things that the world tells you that these, these are what you should be pursuing. And they're great to have goals. It's great to pursue certain things, but not if it supersedes the things of heaven, the things that we're called to meditate on. 
Uh, in fact, Paul is going to say in another letter, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. You see, because when we set our affections on things above, then we're constantly focused on the things of God. We're constantly th focused on the things that God wants us to accomplish on this earth because we understand that those are eternal, not a temporal. Everything of this earth is temporal. Everything that we build, everything that we acquire, everything that we, that we can achieve in this world will one day lay to rot. When we're in the grave, we don't get to take it with us. It stays here. Somebody else gets to enjoy it or it just rots and wears away. But the things that, the investment that we put into the things of heaven are gonna be eternal. And so Paul is now saying, it's real. It's, it's not a story. It's not some make believe and feel good. It is real. And so Paul is saying, set your affections on those things. Think about those things because you're no longer of this world. You're, you, these are the things of heaven. And let's continue. And this is the reason why he's saying to do this. He says in verse three, for you died to this life. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. What Paul is saying is our motivation, our drive, our pursuit should be the things of heaven, the things of God. As we go about in this earth, as we live, as we work, as we... We don't isolate and go into a bubble and wait till Jesus comes back. No, we go out into this world and we allow our life, our relationship with Christ to shine brightly so that people want to know what it is about us that's different. Why is it that we have joy in the midst of trouble? Why is it that we're able to do everything with a smile, even when things are hard? because we do them unto the Lord. We're honoring God. And they see that and they it, it becomes attractive to them and they say, I, I want what you have. Sadly, there's a lot of Christians that don't live their life that way. They don't live in victory. They don't walk in, in the newness of Christ. They don't have the joy of the Lord. And the world seems to have something more to offer and, and many are being attracted to the world but it should be the other way. We should be attracting people into a relationship with Christ by how we live our life, how we, how we go about our day. And when we set our sights on things of heaven, it kind of reminds us, it, get, it keeps us calibrated. It keeps us going on the right path and not getting distracted because sometimes we do get distracted. Sometimes we do get entangled with the things of this life and we forget about the things of heaven. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that we are one day closer to the return of Christ? And that reality is closer than we can even imagine? And we don't want to get stuck looking at this world, pursuing the things of this world, and miss heaven. Paul is reminding us now that we have been set free, now that we are made alive, let's think on those things. Let's think on the spiritual things. Let's have spiritual thinking. Everything we do, everything in our workplace, let's think, Holy Spirit, how, help me to be sensitive to your voice. Help me to be sensitive to the needs around me, Lord, so that I can be a vessel that can make an impact in my workplace, in my family, in my neighborhood, in the grocery store, wherever I go that I would have an opportunity to tell somebody about you because that's our goal is to see as many saved. That was our goal on Sunday. Pastor Ron's goal and vision has been to see people saved, the community come and know Jesus. That's why he built that building, was to see people come to know Christ. And likewise, that should be our goal every day as we tra traverse this life and waiting for our King to return. Amen? Well, let's pray, and then we'll see who's joined us this morning. 
Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning that we are made alive, that we are set free. And now, Lord, you call us to think about the realities of heaven, that the, the, this is real. That is eternal. When we die, we don't. It, it's not the end, but the beginning of eternity. Help us to realize that and begin to shift our priorities, to shift our focus, to have that spiritual thinking, to meditate on the things above and not the things of this world. Lord, as we go about our day, let us think, how can we make an impact for your kingdom today? How can we live in a manner that honors you and brings glory to you so that on that day when, the, when you are revealed to the world, we will share in your glory, as your passage said this morning. Help us, Lord, to, to, to see that, to know that, and to walk in that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Quicken us, Lord, oh, that we would not become attached to the things of this world, but instead that our, our hope and our future would be in the things above, that they would be in you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, that we would understand that even if we don't have what the world considers riches, we have everything in you, the fullness of Christ, the victory in you, Lord. So I praise you and I thank you. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray, God, you would bless them today on this thankful Thursday. Lord, that you would meet their needs and God, give them the faith to believe and trust you to grow today closer to you. We ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus and everyone says, amen. All right, well, let's see who's joined us. I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see my... Well, it's your favorite too, my favorite cat. There it is, Gigi. Okay, let's see who's joined us. Good morning, Sister Sylvia, Brother Alfredo, good morning. Sister Judy, good morning, good morning. Christine, RJ and Georgia, good to have you on. Sister Ivy, Andre, good morning, Andres. Uh, Francis Renee, good morning. Good morning, Sister Karen. Good morning, Mary and Joe. Uh, good morning, Brother Ed. Pastor Maria, good morning. Amen, amen. Ramona, good morning. Let's see, Mary Courtney in Apache Junction, thank you for joining us. Uh, Gay Fiedler, good morning. Hey, there's uh, my brother and sister, Roy and Michelle Lugo. Good morning. Lori, good morning. Sister D, good morning. Cammie, good morning. Laura Lynn, good morning. Glad to have you on. Swanee, good morning. It's so easy to get pulled away by the world and its enticements. Let us be reminded of the greater treasures that exist with him in heaven and in his love. Amen, Sister Lori. Susie, glad to have you on this morning. Francis Renee, amen. Seek first the kingdom of his kingdom and his righteousness, and he will provide all our needs. Uh, Eve, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Connie, good morning. Uh, and I believe that's everyone. So let me turn this around. Thank you for joining me on Thankful Thursday. Tune in tomorrow with Pastor Tim as he has Friday socks. And a uh, reminder that join us on Sunday if you can here at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. at 8340 West Northern Avenue in Glendale, Arizona. Have a blessed day in Jesus. God bless you.